Morning at NTV. Welcome if you've just joined us. Um, what, about 10 minutes past the hour of 9 o'clock. Good morning. I'm here with uh, Risa Kanya. And today we're having the discussion on Chinese language. Uh, the Chinese language is going to be rolled out in schools. We want to find out from you in this hour. Please make sure that you um, keep that conversation going. It's on our social media platforms at NTV Uganda. Morning at NTV. We want to find out what your thoughts are. What do you think about government's decision to roll out uh, the teaching of the Chinese language in schools. That's the discussion we're having today. We've been talking to Omuntu Wawansi on uh, Namirembe Road. Their views are very, very interesting. And, you know, when I went out, I thought, the Chinese language, these people are probably not going to have too much to talk about it. Uh, but interestingly, they have their own views. And in more even interestingly is that they are open to uh, the Chinese language being taught in schools. Uh, the biggest problem is they seem to have a few worries here and there, mm -hmm. but they are open to it. They, they, they feel the Chinese language is okay, it should be uh, taught in schools, uh, but their worry is, are we just learning another language like we learnt English, uh, like um, we have learnt French in school? Does it have anything that it adds to us? Are we just picking up another global lang language and taking n nothing back to the, uh, the global market? Or is the intentions of uh, learning the Chinese language is what seems to worry uh, Omuntu Wawansi. But we want to have that conversation with you. Uh, so you know what to do. You get to our social media platforms and let us know on your thoughts about the Chinese language. Rita, would you mind learning uh, the, the Chinese language? I'm actually already starting. I could just tell you, Ni hao, Ni hao, Ni hao. That's how you say hello in Chinese. Sounds like you're a hungry person. No, morning. Ni hao? Yeah. It sounds like I'm hungry. Sounds like <laughs> Ni hao. I haven't well, said anything. Ni hao, but, well, it's not my language. But, but, but we're talking to a Muntua once. Mm. They have their concern. And, and, I would, and it's quite understandable. They say, well, look here. We, we, I think we, um, we have one of the best speaking uh, English speakers mm -hmm. in Uganda as people in the region yes what has that added to this country that's a good question i think one of the things is that yes you should always consider why you're actually going to go ahead and learn a language what implications is it going to come with and i think in this perspective when it comes to chinese it helps us with a lot of things looking at english alone when we decided to take on the english language we found it here right we have embraced it. It has helped us transact, even just using social media. We're able to communicate with a bigger sphere of people because of the English language. So that's a plus, right? We can't say, no, they colonized us and left us to this English, and you know we're not using it. Right now, we're communicating. Right now, for someone listening in, because you know English and the command of the English language, you're able to transact. You're able to express the way you want to, what you'd like to express, because, first of all, we are a multilingual country in terms of languages. Yes? I could come and speak to you in Yunyankwari. You perhaps you'd speak to me in uh, Luganda. Mm. Yes, it makes a few transactions harder. But when it comes to Chinese language and why we should actually be able to perhaps take it on is, first of all, let's look at our curriculum right now. How many languages do we have being taught? Arabic, yeah. German, yeah. Latin mm -hmm. is all going on, yes? Sometimes they put, yes, there's French. Then they bring in Luganda here. But all we ever know about is that it's just the Luganda language that is being taught. Well, we have so many other languages within this country, yes? Some may be Runyankwari here and there, but growing up I only learned Luganda while in school. So why not add Chinese? Because if we talk about Chinese right now and what it is being ranked as, it's the second largest economy. It is one of the biggest trading um, countries right now. It has so many, it's like above the top three in a number of things. So why would it be want to be able to have command over the Chinese language as well? Because it's going to help our country, like it or not. We have a lot of actually, first of all, South Africa has embraced this. In 44 schools, they're already teaching Chinese. If South Africa, which also has a number of languages, can embrace Chinese, why is Uganda we opposing this? So just like Omuntu Wawansi, Rita agrees that we should pick up on the Chinese language and mm. learn it. There is, there is nothing wrong with learning oh. more languages. Mm. But the same question that Omuntu Wawansi asked mm -hmm. is the same question that I think you must have in your mind or I'll post to you. Which is, is when we learn these languages, what do we bring to the table? Okay. with these languages are we just learning another language like i would wake up online and learn rosoga mm. what does it eventually bring to the table uh, the gentleman that we talked to um Montuasi, he he interestingly told me look here mm -hmm. we have learned english mm -hmm. we have learned french we have learned all this but get someone and tell them to just sit down on a table and um create just a, a small housing mm. 
Nice. Because that's what the Chinese are known for. Yes, so but... So much. <laughs> but we learn this language, mm -hmm. but what do we bring to the What do we bring to the table, to the global market, with learning all these global uh, languages? Okay, one of the things right now is the fact that within China, a lot of African students actually are going to China to pursue their education. And because they do not already have the command of the Chinese language, they already take off time to first learn the language before they can go ahead and actually go ahead with their studies there yes we're talking about the fact that you know you can uh, can be able to set up a housing here a phone housing or something of the sort but imagine being able to have the educational experience from china china has opened up its doors to actually let people in and on a scholarship level you don't even have to pay for it at some point so why not learn now so that when eventually it comes to the time of you going there to study you don't have to lose another year or a few months because you're learning the language that could be a start you know, because it's just a step in helping you achieve whatever bigger dream you have. Is it in terms of engineering? Is it in terms of whatever technological advancements it could be? The fact is, as a country, we're losing a lot of people to other countries, yes? Yet we could bring them here and actually have them build our country's economy. So one of the things is, if you can't beat someone at uh, their game, join, join them. them. And I mean, learning Chinese is one of the ways of joining them. So we're able to be a part of that whole trading kind of situation. And, and, and let's not forget, um, just recently it has, you know, it has been word on the street, and mm. we, we know uh, that our friends, our neighbors in Rwanda, have been picking up on learning the English language. And last year as well, mm. and the, the, the few years past, we know that our friends that no, we now want to learn their language, the mm. Chinese, the people in Asia, we've had very many people coming from this country, Uganda, mm -hmm. going to Asia, to teach English. Imagine. So the Asians are learning English. We are taking up on their language. Yes. Um, our friends in Rwanda are learning English mm -hmm. as well. So it, it looks like it, we shouldn't be fighting this. No. The, what we should try as much to do is to see that we don't just learn the languages, no. but we, we teach more people as they learn the language. Mm. Let's teach them. And let's help them understand that we're not just picking up another language, mm. but we're picking up this language so that we can bring this to the table, so yes. that we can bring this to the table as well. Let's tell people, when you learn this language, this we, is you're not just learning this language, this mm. is what we expect out of you mm. now that you know this, the, the Chinese language. Mm, we expect you to go to Asia and, you know, and, and, and learn some of these things yes. and bring them back home. Mm -hmm. But then the, the other problem is most of the people when... We get the opportunity to learn some of these things. We end up being in Kubacheyo mm -hmm. more than helping them. Yes. Us down here. Yes. So th that's another another thing that we need to think about a lot. Mm. So I think the task is on the government as as they have gone ahead to uh, introduce uh, that Chinese language mm -hmm. in schools. I think the task is on them now as well to make sure that they educate us as much as possible and to make sure that the people, we that are going to learn the Chinese language, mm. understand that we're learning this language to that bring cool. something back to this country, bring something onto this economy, yes. add something to this okay. country and not just learn the language. Mm. I think that is the biggest task. I think learning these languages has never been a problem. And how consistent are we going to be? Because I remember when I was going through school, we had French classes. Mm -hmm. I, I learned some little bit of French that for some reason I was given an option to drop it. So of what importance is it to me to learn French mm -hmm. from, okay, because French is so much taught in secondary schools. So from P1, primary one, to primary seven, I'm not learning any French. Mm. Then suddenly... Secondary school, You're exposed to I am it. exposed to it. I am mm. tasked to learn it. And then at A level, I am given the opportunity to drop it. So it's, it seems to have no continuity. But you that know, is there's, that there's no purpose in it. Because if, if you really want me to learn the Chinese language, mm -hmm. then start it early. Because we all know we learn faster when we are, when, when, when mm -hmm. we are younger. You know? So that I can grow with it, go to secondary school, don't give me an option to drop it. Mm -hmm. By the time I get to secondary school, when I'm given the option to drop it, I am so interested in this language because I've picked it up. But and isn't the onus on you um, at some point, David? Because at some point it will not always be the fact that and that's why they give you an option. Do you want to carry on with it? Do you want to drop it? Because when you do drop it, that is on your terms. But if we're looking at a country right now where yeah. unemployment is the hugest problem, yes? 
um, applying for a number of jobs, they will ask you how many languages can you speak. There's a reason why they would like to know how many languages you can speak. And the more languages you can speak, the better chances of you actually getting a job elsewhere. And, in, and even a different part of the world. But the thing is, the more languages you have around and can be able to speak, because if I said, let's try and say good morning right now, I can say, Murireje, Mumezemte, Mwasuzemutia, Good morning, Nihao. How many languages are those? But the continuation of it. Yes. Because, yes, there might have benefits, which are so many. But are we going to always have to wait on the government to point out the benefits? Because right now, the Chinese government is even has decided that it's going to train the teachers that are actually going to be able to teach the Chinese language within Uganda. I think They're providing the supplies. If you, if you look at um, most of these countries, like we, we are uh, pointing out, um, our friends, uh, the Asians in China. Mm. The initiative is not just to introduce the language. Yes. The initiative is to make sure that the language is introduced. It we learn on. as much as we can. Mm -hmm. And we learn the importance of learning these languages. Because when I was learning French, I wasn't told the importance of learning French. Mm. I was introduced to French just like I, I was introduced to any other subject. What so I, 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 you learn... Mm -hmm. you, just like you get introduced to art, and then you discover later on that, huh, is not she, my she's thing. not the right thing. Exactly. Yes. So you decide, what is it that I can do that can, can get me the max mm -hmm. to pass? And uh, you end up dropping chi the, the French language because you are not getting the max you need to pass. Because let's not forget, in Uganda, school is not about you... What, what you want to what, do, what, where what you, you want to go. What, 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 what you're learning, mm. what does it add to you? That is not the importance of school in Uganda. The importance of school in Uganda is for you to pass. Yes. And you have to pick up on the, on the subjects that you are good at. So you pick up on subjects that you are good at mm. and you pass. And you drop the subjects that would have added a lot to you because you can't pass the subjects. So I think the initiative needs to go further than just introducing learning English or Chinese or French. Mm. The initiative has to go further into us understanding why we need to learn these languages, needs to go further into understanding what this learning these languages brings to the table, what the difference it makes. We need to tell people, look here, you are going to learn Chinese. Do you know how many people in this country can't speak Chinese? Do you know the opportunities you have mm -hmm. if you learn Chinese? Do you know how much money? Because money is a very, very attractive thing. It's one thing that you can attach to anything. But David, listening to you speak and you're talking about how we should tell them about the benefits, it also goes back to this one thing. As a child, as they introduced you to all these different foods, did you know the benefits? It was fast. Let's try this. Does he like mashed potatoes? Is he allergic to the mashed potatoes? Which is a thing now, by the way. You can't be allergic to mashed potatoes. And then right after that, you as a... A child, As a child, you, you start to be picky. I don't want this, I want this. And that's the same thing in regards to winning. It's the same thing as what is happening here. They introduce it in primary. In all level, you have a choice to drop it and continue. Because the only thing they can never do is first let you, without being told about benefits, would you just like this without being told what will come to you? But before we continue with the discussion, we'd just like to take a listen to the executive director of the National Curriculum Development Center, Grace Baguma, who talks and justifies why the government is going ahead with this. Social media. China has things. become a country that is linking up and has quite a lot to do. And even the jobs, the construction companies that are doing the roads. So when the language becomes, the Chinese language then becomes a, a critical aspect. Even Japanese and Korean. So the east of uh, Asia, we use chopsticks for eating instead of forks and spoons. Now, you can be a part of the conversation by going to our social media platforms, NTV Uganda. The hashtag is morning at NTV, and a number of comments are coming through, which is very interesting. Some of them, some simply saying this is simply colonialism. Coming in from the Beehive 67, she does talk about how colonialism is simply what it is. And also, you can give us a call in case you'd like to be a part of the conversation. For David, he believes... You should tell us about the benefits before we go ahead to learn the Chinese language. Uh, we, we, we were having that discussion before we um, went out to listen to our friend here. Mm. But you see, when you're, when you're growing up as a child, you, your mother takes the time to 
introduce you to foods, this and this. Yes. You know, you try out mashed potatoes, you try out um, sweet potatoes, mm. you try out rice and all that. And in most cases, let me tell you something. The things that your parents insist on are the things that you end up eating. The, the parents will go ahead and tell you, come on, David, eat this. This is very good for you. When you eat fruits, you're going to be strong. Mm -hmm. And then suddenly when it comes to the point of you deciding on what you want to eat and not eat, you end up eating these sweet potatoes because you know what? Your mom, your mother has ingrained it in you mm -hmm. that when you eat potatoes or fruits, you are going to go strong. That's why you find kids saying, I have to eat sweet potatoes because when you eat sweet potatoes, you go strong. Mm -hmm. Because the initiative has the not be, it has been made. Mm. It's not just introducing these foods. It's taking that time and initiative to make sure that we understand why we are eating these foods, why we are learning these languages. What does it add to us? Mm. What do, what will it bring to the table when you learn this language? So I think for me that is very key. Other other than that, we need continuity. I still think that to give me two, three, four years to learn a language and then give me an option to drop it <laughs> is very fast. So you want it to be by force? Not you by you want it to continue Not by force. Mm. Let's begin with primary. Okay. Primary school, let's start with the Chinese language. Which they're planning slowly, on putting in. Slowly, mm -hmm. gradually. Wait, let's, wait, let's get to secondary school and then give me an option to drop this language at senior three. At senior three, after 10 years of me learning this language, I clearly now understand or know if I really want to go on with this language or not. But f to, for it to be introduced to me in my secondary one, and then suddenly four years later, when I'm struggling to make the points, I don't know if it's 32 points or... Uh, <laughs> but you understand, <laughs> you understand. I'm, I'm, I'm struggling to make sure that I hit this pass mark. Yes. And now... You've put me in a battle. I have to think of the pass mark, mm -hmm. and then I have to think of the languages. Mm -hmm. So, a call. Yeah. Hello? Hello. Well, do call us back, and remember that the number to call. The number to call is on your on your screen. And as you do that for David, <laughs> as he says, strangest thing is that you need to introduce in primary. I did learn German in P1 and P2. My first lesson was in the morning. Hello. We're having an issue with our phone line, but please do call in and we will take in your call. And also go to our social media platforms, NTV Uganda, the hashtag is morning at NTV, and simply answer that question. Should we consider having this as a part of our curriculum? I did learn German. Now, Guten Morgen is all I remember. And I had this as my first lesson every single day from Monday to Friday, which was at about uh, 7.30. <laughs> Imagine, 7.30. And then after that, we totally moved on from it after P3. Because I then changed school, totally moved on from it, but I do remember a bit of it. Then it, brought, it was brought back into my secondary school, but I chose not to take it. French was also something they tried to push me to do. I chose not to eventually continue with it, but I do and can speak French. Question is, did you understand why they were pushing you to... Yes, and actually it was part of my honours, but it was something to do with helping me in terms of jobs later on. Yeah. Yes, so there's also that bit that, yes, as you prepare your child, because I mean, in today's newspaper, we do have the conversation about high school experience required when you're going to get a job. Yes. And perhaps this is something you can add to your CV at some point. You don't have to wait eventually after you graduate to start to think of what to add on here and there. If you can do it at the same time, it helps. Because times are changing. David, the time you and I perhaps could have been uh, within the education system is not going what's, what's going to happen in 2021. True. And China will have taken over. And don't forget, we have this conversation going on on our social media platforms. We are going to get into some of those tweets and Facebook as well yes. uh, to get your, your thoughts on Chinese language being not just introduced but taught in schools. What are your thoughts? Do you think it's something that is going to add anything to us? Do you think it's just another language that we're picking up? Uh, do you think that the curriculum is just looking at ways of, you know, having more subjects? What do you think about the Chinese language mm -hmm. being taught in schools? We have that conversation and we have so we're taking some calls as well. Uh, please be sure to call us and share your thoughts. Uh, we still seem to be struggling a little bit with our phone lines, but we'll keep trying. Worry yes, not. We shall. We'll keep trying. And as mm -hmm. soon as we can get one or two calls, uh, we'll definitely do that. Yes. Now, a number of people would also treat this as Chinese propaganda being spread. Do you agree that it's simply Chinese propaganda that's spreading across Africa? Because, yes, China has taken over in a number of ways. From 20, it has started in a number of places. Now, in a number of 
African countries right now. There is a Chinese institution. And a number of people are wondering why. How is this happening? All of a sudden, we woke up and about from 2016, China has just simply been going up and up and up in ranks and also being a part of a number of projects within Africa and Uganda as well. So some people are saying, are we simply spreading propaganda here? with bring the introduction of the Chinese language within Uganda, because if South, Afri South Africa has taken it on, Uganda seems to want to take it on, what happens next? That is something that continues within the conversation. But for me, I personally believe that if it's something that will help us get jobs in the future, if it's something that we can do it for the next generation, let's try it out. It doesn't hurt in any way. Now you can call in, the numbers are on the screen, and the number is on the screen, and also on our social media platforms, keep those comments coming through. We're just going to go to them in just a few minutes. But for now, Arabic is there, Latin is there, but let's take in this call. Hello? Hello? Hello, good morning. Good morning. Hello, am I live on NTV? Yes, you are. Who am I speaking to? My name is Moses. Uh, uh, the Chinese language. Yes. My issue with the Chinese language and why I would say we would probably need to, to teach French and German mm -hmm. is that French and German are language of colonial countries, right? Yes. If I learned French, I could go and uh, live anywhere in West Africa, mm. you see, and I would be able to get a job there. The language of China, the Chinese language, is not the language of a colonialist. If you learn the language, what opportunities are there for you? Yes. Realistically, am I going to go to China and get a job? Mm -hmm. I don't think so. How many translation jobs are there available for the people who learn Chinese in Uganda? Okay. Not too many. So if we must teach it, what opportunities are there for people to use their Chinese language later on in life? Mm -hmm. And as you believe right now, Moses, there are not so many op opportunities for us as Africans. No, I do not think so. If I learn Spanish, I can go anywhere in Latin America because that is the language of communication there. If I learn French, I can go anywhere in West Africa or around Africa because that is a language of communication. That is their national language, yes. you see. The national language of China mm. is Chinese. Which other country is, is there? Is but it what, Taiwan probably? There is that, but, but Moses. if I learn Mandarin, mm. there's, there, there are only so many countries that I can go to. It limits your scope. Sorry? It limits the scope of where you can go. It limits the scope. Mm. So it if you, the if you, entirely. yes, but wouldn't it just yes. say that at least you'd be able to get a job elsewhere apart from Uganda? Define Isn't that elsewhere. something? Like you said, let's in be, Asia, in China. Let let be realistic. Mm. Define elsewhere. In China at the moment, could we say that maybe there might be more job offers there for a number of Ugandans than they are here? Oh, we have lost Moses, unfortunately. Moses, do call us back, and you too can be a part of the conversation. For Moses, he believes no. Maybe for Spanish, yes. French, yes. But in regards, and German as well, but in regards to Chinese, it's not going to take you so far within the world in regards in communication. Now we're taking it to our Facebook and Twitter comments. David is on hand to just read those for us and see what you're saying. The hashtag is morning at NTV. Feel free to go to our Facebook page, or you could go to Twitter as well, NTV Uganda. Morning at NTV or at NTV Uganda, as you can see on our social media platforms here, we have a couple of interesting tweets that are coming through and Facebook as well. Um, let me start with um, one that comes in from Asad Mugenyi, um, who says that uh, one point that you guys are missing on languages is the key beneficiary. The more Ugandans, Africans, the world ATC learning Chinese, the better for it and for China. Why? Chinese culture, movies, music, literature, fashion, sports are now consumed by an even way bigger market than the one billion citizens of, of China. Look at English, Hollywood, R&B, hip-hop, rock, jazz, ATC, music, literature, gadgets, name it. All are Muzungu related. Locally, Luganda runs Yuji. Unofficially, Luganda Music Movies, The Traders ETC. You'll find it in every single town. That comes in from Asad Mugenyi. And looking at some of the tweets that we have coming in here, uh, John Samba, you say, um, will the Chinese also learn Swahili in their schools? Uh, that's a very interesting uh, question there. Uh, Roderick Toby, you say China is playing a mind game. They'll talk about most African countries since they are investing big here. In case you have just joined us and you're wondering, what are we talking about here? We're talking about the Chinese language. Government has introduced uh, the Chinese language. It's going to be taught 
in schools. 38 schools have been um, uh, earmarked to uh, kick off this course at uh, Macquarie University. If you go right now, it has already been rolled out and is part of the curriculum. But we want to find out from you, your thoughts. Do you think the Chinese language is one language that we should be positive about learning or is it just another language? And we are looking at some of your feedback on social media. Uh, Musa Teba on our Facebook page, you say, why not to begin with teaching of Kiswahili? Because books are rotting in libraries. Um, another tweet coming in here from uh, Naman Obetia. You say, you must learn to speak the language of the one that puts bread on your table. That's a very interesting one. Um, uh, Anthony Marshall, you say that's a very good idea. Um, another one on Facebook, uh, Tabu Trouble Hussein, you say, I see most Ugandans getting employed as teachers. This will help reduce unemployment rate in Uganda. We have talked about this with um, Rita and how we need more Ugandans to get jobs. We, we have been complaining continuously how uh, the youth, we are unemployed and all that. If more youth can learn the language, maybe we can pick up on some of these uh, jobs. Um, I see Tabu Trey, you say, uh, okay, I um, uh, read that. Uh, Dumba Vicent, you say it is important to teach our children Chinese because Uganda is depending on China in trade and you can't trade with a country in a different language. That's a very interesting thought as well. Uh, Jamira, you say, due to the debts we have from China, it shows that they are going to colonize Uganda again. We hope that doesn't happen, Rita. We hope it doesn't happen. It, it, and we, we, we are praying that doesn't happen again. Um, I had over radio that a certain UPE school failed to sit P7 candidates uh, final exams due to a fee of 1,000 Uganda shillings. Uh, unfortunately, yes, there it is. But I think it's the right time to kick off uh, the Chinese project. Okay, thank you very much. Raymond Josh Tendo, we say there is no need to teach Chinese language in schools since English alone is enough and it's spoken worldwide. So, there are your thoughts. Uh, keep them coming on uh, Facebook, uh, on Twitter, at NTV Uganda or Morning at NTV. We want to find out from you. The Chinese language is going to be introduced in our schools. Uh, one of these days you're going to go home and your child is going to greet you in Chinese. Ready or not, you could just come up with a, an answer, have to find a way. But still, we want to find uh, your, get your opinions on the Chinese language being taught in schools. Morning at NTV. <laughs> Hello. Good morning. Who am I speaking to? Yeah. Pardon? Yeah. Um. Could you please kindly lower the volume on your television? Yeah. Okay. Please go ahead. I feel like this is this is really worrying for our country. Mm-hmm. How so? Because, because even Indians will also come up and they're like, we are having a lot of investment here. Then why not learn Indian? Mm. Or Hindu or something like that. Hmm, okay. Yeah, so it's more or less, you know, useless. Okay. Because I feel like there is Luo, there is Luganda and everything. Why not learn that? Why so not first unify the country before so let's, Chinese? Okay, that's a very interesting thought. So you're, in, in your regards as a caller, you believe that perhaps you should start with Nyankori, Luganda, exactly. Ruchiga. Exactly. Let's exactly. teach that yeah. first. Thank you so much. That's a very interesting view to it. And also the fact that he raises, I mean, we have had Indians come into our economy at one point yeah. where we're not teaching the Indian language as well. Exactly. That's, very, that's a very interesting thought and web length. Who are we speaking to? Yeah, this is Simon. Thank you so much, Simon. A very interesting thought that has me also thinking perhaps you should think about that. Because from one of the comments on social media, there was a conversation about perhaps we need to actually learn the language of the person who's putting bread on our table. But at some point, the Indians also are part of our community and our economy. So why didn't we land Indian as well? Very interesting thought. Do we have any more comments, David? Oh, yes. We have more, more comments on social media. Kadoba Moses, you say, this, this bandwagon and shallow thinking will lead us nowhere. So simply because China is our government's leading partner, we are going, to, uh, we are going Chinese. So if 
it shifts to being Viet to B Vietnam. Shall we go Vietnamese or Korean? Or if North Korea becomes our leading partner, this is not right. Thank you very much, Kadova Moses. Uh, John Nsamba, you say, will the Chinese also teach Swahili in their school? This seems to be the most asked question. Are uh, the Chinese going to teach Swahili? Um, let's not forget, we are not uh, that level of Swahili in the country, but it seems to be a very interesting topic uh, that people want the Chinese to also learn our languages as we take up on learning their language as well. We are still on social media. We still want to get more of um, your comments. And if you get some time, please uh, pick up the phone and call us. Share with us your opinions on the Chinese language being introduced in our schools. Hello? Hello? Now, there seems to be an issue with the network, but we keep on trying to go through. We might just take in your call. As it stands right now, two callers have called in Moses and Simon as well, saying, no, this shouldn't be something we should be trying to introduce. Well, vis-a-vis -vis on social media, we have people talking about how we should actually go ahead and introduce it. Do you think that maybe we could be able to have tweets coming in in Chinese that we can eventually be able to understand, David? Because that would be interesting. I mean, if we can eventually be able to go through English, we could be able to use Chinese. Any one of the two could actually be something that we could use. But also, if some people can write in French and we could understand them, German and we could understand them, perhaps let's just take on Chinese. If the Chinese government has willingly, by the way, said that they are supplying supplies for this and they will also be teaching the teachers that will go ahead to teach this in Uganda. So that's a start. As if we do know, also within the... Chinese area and China as well, they're making sure that they're teaching them English. So if they're learning English and we're learning Chinese, communication is set to get better and better and better. Let's take in a few more comments in regards to this on our social media platforms. David? Morning at NTV, we're still looking at your, your, your say on the Chinese language being introduced in schools. And uh, the comments on social media are coming in thick and fast and very interesting. Uh, Michael Bucky Winston, you say China has the largest growing economy. Teaching, uh, teaching Chinese language is just preparing children for a future with a diverse route, especially in business and communication. That's a very, very, very good tweet uh, there. Um, uh, Michael Balika Winston already read that. Um, will the Chinese also teach Swahili in their schools? That has been covered. French or Kiswahili would be a better option. Do you think we should learn French, Swahili, or Chinese? That is also an, uh, uh, an opinion on our Facebook page. Uh, you can also fall in and let us know what you think would be um, a better option. Uh, we're looking at um, Roderick Troby. You say China is playing a mind game. They will take over most African countries since they are investing big. Okay, uh, seems like we Ugandans, we are worried of taking uh, over our country. Why not to begin with teaching of Kiswahili? Because books are rotting in school libraries. I think we covered this earlier on. Uh, but uh, uh, thank you very much uh, for that tweet as well. Uh, you must learn to speak the language of the one that puts bread on your table. The conversation seems to surround a lot on, you know, Chinese and China uh, putting bread on our table. And now we have decided we are going to learn the language because they are the ones uh, construct constructing our roads. Uh, they seem to be in this country, every corner that you turn. So people feel a little bit threatened. They're like, yeah, we have had the news. These people are taking over a certain port because of debt uh, that has not been paid uh, by a certain country. So are they moving in fast as well to take, uh, to take over uh, Uganda as well? That is a worry that many seem to be having. But the conversation still goes on on our social media platforms. And uh, we, are, we are receiving your calls as well. Uh, we will make sure that as soon as uh, we can have those calls coming through, uh, we can sh um, pick them and we have share your opinions as well. Morning at NTV. Hello, good morning. Good morning. You're live how are on... You? I'm fine, how are you? Who are we speaking to? Yeah, this is Kenya Patrick calling within... Yes, is... yes, Patrick. What do you have to say? Should we take on Chinese language within our schools? I don't think there's need of this Chinese language in the school. Really? Why? This is just a political ambition of the government. It's oh! It's politically motivated. Okay, so there's no way we can actually be able to benefit, whether it's politically motivated or not. Can we benefit from this? We have lost you, Patrick, unfortunately, but from what we have gathered, it is simply a political move on the end of the government. But how about, can we actually use, because from a number of calls that we have gotten in, there's no benefit here, but how can we make something 
uh, take it to our advantage and somehow perhaps make something out of it. Because perhaps you could use the Chinese language here or later. It could come and be in play. Be able to call in. The number is on the line, is on the screen, sorry, and you can be able to just continue the conversation. Twitter and Facebook are also a place to go for you in case you have actually paid your OTT. It would be a right place to make use of it in 2019. Let's take in a few more of those comments from David. Our research, the conversation on our social media platforms is very, very, very interesting. If you haven't been part of it, come on, come on. Go down to Facebook, go down to Twitter and uh, share your, your opinion as well on the Chinese language being taught in schools. Uh, very interesting comments coming through. Uh, the biggest conversation on our social media uh, platforms seem to be um, Swahili and French. Most people seem to suggest that uh, we should go for Swahili and um, French instead of Chinese. And uh, many Chinese will be asking, what did we do to you? Uh, we're bringing this language. Those people haven't. We're bringing it to you. Uh, but yes, um, <laughs> uh, the conversation still goes on on Facebook. Um, very many tweets. Um, uh, Swahili seems to be all over the place. Um, you might... Uh, Oh, oh my God. Uh, Anthony Marshall, you say it's a very good idea uh, to learn uh, Chinese in schools. I see Tabu Hussein. Um, you see, I see most Ugandans getting employed as teachers. This will help reduce unemployment rate in Uganda. That's the conversation we're having today morning at NTV. Chinese language being introduced in schools. Is, is it something that we need? What are your thoughts on it? Uh, that's what we are discussing today. For all of us that have actually been able to participate in the conversation this morning, the hashtag is morning at NTV. We continue to see what will happen because right now on the curriculum, Arabic is being taught and we also have the one and only Latin. We have French, we have German all being taught within our, uh, within our curriculums within Uganda, meaning it's not just English. But someone did call in and say perhaps you should include Runyankore, Ruchiga, so as to unify us as Ugandans before, you before we go ahead and step out into the rest of the world and decide to perhaps strengthen their economies. As that, conti that conversation continues on our platforms, which is NTV Uganda on Facebook and Twitter, remember the hashtag is morning at NTV. And for all those that have been a part of the show from the start, thank you so, so much. I'd just like to wish you a happy new week. From me, Rita Kanya and David Rukasi. Have a lovely day.